the beginning of Tabitha's story is extraordinarily ordinary. All of us have been touched by someone like Tabitha, or know someone who has. We all know people who overflow with good works and compassionate acts on behalf of those in need. There are people like Tabitha who give life and dignity to those overlooked and forgotten in a world that favors the haves over the have-nots. This is why Pastor Jeff's reading of Tabitha's story is most likely the first time you've heard her name. The extraordinarily ordinary stories in our lives are often overlooked, even forgotten, when sandwiched alongside extraordinarily extraordinary stories. This is the case, the case for Tabitha and even Aeneas for verses before Tabitha's story. You see, we're drawn to the bright lights of Saul's conversion with Jesus on the Damascus Road, and then Paul's subsequent ministry, along with Peter's conversion of Cornelius. Both stories I'm sure you've heard of, maybe even studied in Sunday school or a Bible study. Tabitha dies, and two disciples in Jaffa send for Peter, who was in a nearby town. If anyone could do anything in this moment of death and sorrow, it was Peter. Peter, the guy who had denied Jesus in his lowest hour three times, is now the rock upon which the church is being built. In telling the story of Tabitha's death, St. Luke is echoing a story from his namesake gospel. Jesus called the twelve together, and he gave them power and authority over all demons and to heal sickness. He sent them out to proclaim God's kingdom and to heal the sick. When Peter arrives in Jaffa, the sting of death has set in, and the widows, once cared for by Tabitha, are beside themselves. As Peter entered the room where Tabitha's body lay, the widows were crying as they showed the tunics and other clothing Tabitha made when she was alive. Elizabeth Sushler Pierinza a Romanian-born Roman Catholic feminist theologian who teaches at Harvard Divinity School wrote, in the first century, as today, the majority of the poor and starving were women, especially those women who had no male agencies that might have enabled them to share in the wealth of a patriarchal system. In the first century, widows had no one to advocate for them or protect them in a societal structure that gave preference to men. Tabitha had given agency to women who were at the bottom of the rung of societal power. Tabitha's life had given light to those who lived in their community's darkest corners, and her death has now caused a crisis. You and I, we most likely live in a fixed system, an arrangement. Our nation is governed by a fixed document that has from time to time been amended. Laws change, but the overall structure is fixed. On paper, our fixed structures are to be applied or enforced equally. Equal justice under law is engraved on the west side of the United States Supreme Court. And a unanimous decision back in 1891, Caldwell v. Texas, Chief Justice Melville wrote the powers of the states in dealing with crimes within their borders are not limited, but no state can deprive particular persons or classes of persons of equal and impartial justice under the law. On paper, yes, equality under the law, but when we step outside of what's on paper and step beyond the expectations for how we are to behave, the degree to which we are punished varies on markers like gender, race, and economic status. Jaffa was a port town in Judea, an area under Jewish law, and on paper, the widows Tabitha cared for were to have been cared for by the community. Don't treat any widow or orphan badly. If you do treat them badly and they cry out to me, you'll be sure that I hear their cry. I'll be furious and I'll kill you with the sword then your wives and widows, your wives will be widows and your children will be orphans, Exodus 32. The system was broken, and Tabitha stepped in to care for those who had been forgotten. Even within our fixed system with clear guidelines, we sin against one another. 
The churchy way of saying this is to say that we turn away and our love fails. We forget the widows. We lie to the person asking for a buck and we sit on our hands when we see others mistreated or exploited. And we do this over and over again. Tabitha was the source of hope for the widows of Jaffa, and when she died, so did their hope. St. Luke tells us that after Peter said, Tabitha, get up, and all saw that Tabitha was alive, many put their faith in the Lord. Faith in the Lord, not faith in Peter, not faith in Tabitha. Many put their faith in the Lord. The Lordship of Jesus Christ and the good news of his grace subverts the present order by announcing a new age where reality is not based on our fixed structures, but upon God's promise to make all creation new. God promises to restore all of creation by reconciling us to God and one another. Our fixed structures often lead to paralysis and death for those on the margins or the lower rungs of the ladder. But the one who ordered the chaos of creation was worshipped in the manger, and carried a cross. That one? Jesus tells fishermen to drop their nets and the ill and the dead to get up. In Aeneas's healing, in Tabitha's rising, these, soci these societal systems have been rendered null and void. In church, we bear witness to this. We are witnesses to how Jesus Christ has overcome the power of sin and death. In the empty tomb, leaving his burial clothes behind, Jesus has told the world, no more will we be separated from God and one another. It's not that the last shall be first. They are first. It's not that the dead shall live. When we were dead to our sin, Christ has offered us new life now. In Jesus Christ, no one stays in their place. Fishermen will preach, and the paralyzed will walk. The dead will live again, from death and sin to life through grace. Amen.